man, a hundred enemies, a forest, and a sword that looks more like a chunk of castle gate than any blade ever forged. This isn't some over-the-top fan fiction. This is Berserk. But is there any actual science to back any of this up? How far could the human body realistically go in terms of strength, endurance, and pure, unbreakable will? Today, we're putting guts under the microscope, figuratively of course, and breaking down with real-world physics and biology whether anyone even remotely like him could exist. And where else could we begin but with the most absurd weapon in all of medieval fantasy, the Dragon Slayer. The Dragon Slayer isn't really a sword in the traditional sense. In the manga, it's described as more a slab of raw iron than a blade. And that's exactly what it looks like. Not a finely crafted weapon, but a steel construction beam sharpened enough to tear through whatever stands in its way. Canonically, the Dragon Slayer measures about six to six and a half feet long, roughly one foot wide and between two to three inches thick. Given those dimensions, and assuming it's made of dense steel or iron, the weight estimates land somewhere between 330 and 440 pounds. For perspective, the largest historical two-handed sword, the German Zweihander, was about six and a half feet long, but weighed only seven pounds. The Dragon Slayer is 50 times heavier than that, a fact that should make it utterly unusable to any human. Could someone even lift it? Technically, yes. The world record for the clean and jerk is 580 pounds, set by Georgian weightlifter Lasha Talahadze. But that's under ideal conditions. Balanced barbell, perfect form, and a single explosive motion. Guts doesn't have a perfect barbell. He's gripping an unbalanced slab of metal, swinging it, spinning it, controlling it, and repeating the motion hundreds of times in chaotic full contact combat. And here's where torque comes into play. If the weapon's center of mass is just two feet from the grip, holding it would require around 8,800 newton meters of torque. That's enough to tear a normal shoulder apart. You need tendons and ligaments reinforced like hydraulic cables just to keep the weapon steady. Swinging it adds another layer of impossibility. Even at a conservative 22 miles per hour, each strike would deliver about 9,000 joules of kinetic energy more than five times the impact of a 5.56 millimeter rifle round. And while that sounds devastating, it also means the user's body has to absorb the counterforce from every swing. Most people struggle to swing a 20 pound sledgehammer for more than a half hour. Guts does it with over 300 pounds for hours with precision. Biomechanically, that's fantasy. The shoulders would suffer structural failure. The lower back would collapse under torque stress the wrists and elbows would dislocate. But Guts, he treats the Dragon Slayer like an extension of his own arm. Nosferatu Zod isn't just a strong opponent. He's a living wall of muscle and bone. Standing over eight feet tall, He's capable of crushing stone with his bare hands and tossing fully armored soldiers like rag dolls. In the manga, Zod can throw an armored soldier several yards through the air. If we assume a soldier weighs 200 pounds plus 60 pounds of armor, that's 260 pounds total. Throwing that mass 16 feet and 6 feet into the air requires around 2,500 to 3,000 joules of energy in less than a second. Now imagine a direct hit. A punch or a sword strike from Zod could easily generate 10,000 to 20,000 joules of impact, depending on the speed. That's equivalent to being slammed by a medieval battering ram at full force. Even if Guts blocks with his sword, the energy doesn't disappear. It travels straight into his arms, shoulders, and spine. That would shatter forearms, dislocate shoulders, and compress vertebrae instantly. And yet, Guts takes the hit and counterattacks. That isn't just strength, it's coordination, tactical skill, and a pain threshold far beyond normal human capacity. A normal fighter wouldn't even survive one strike from Zod. Guts survives multiple and keeps coming.
One of the most legendary moments in Berserk is the 100-man battle in the forest. The fighting takes place during the Golden Age arc, before Guts acquires the Dragon Slayer, meaning he was using a massive greatsword instead. Still absurdly heavy by historical standards, but nowhere near the 400-pound behemoth he would later wield. Facing 100 armed men, even in waves, is the kind of scenario no real human could realistically survive. In close quarters combat, a trained fighter burns about 10 to 15 calories per minute with the weight of Guts's greatsword, his expenditure likely doubled, hitting 25 to 30 calories per minute. If the fight lasted one to two hours, that's 1,500 to 3,000 calories burned just from combat, not counting the metabolic cost of adrenaline, blood loss, and injury. And then there's the lactic acid buildup. Even elite soldiers and athletes hit muscle failure after prolonged high-intensity exertion. Once lactic acid floods the muscles, contraction efficiency plummets, and performance collapses. Guts doesn't collapse. He fights on, blocking, dodging, striking, keeping his footing despite exhaustion and wounds. Physiologically, that would require exceptional lung capacity for oxygen delivery, a cardiovascular system capable of sustaining elite level output, and muscle fibers combining explosive force with slow twitch endurance. His pain tolerance would have to be so abnormal it could qualify as a neurological disorder. It's the equivalent of running a marathon while swinging a 150-pound pole at full speed and somehow winning. If everything Guts does already sounds physically impossible, the Berserker armor cranks it up to an entirely different level. One that defies not just biology, but the very purpose of the body's survival systems. At first glance, it looks like a set of heavy black plate armor. Intimidating, but nothing beyond what a well-crafted suit could be. But the moment Guts wears it, you realize it's not just protective gear. It's a complete override of the human body's natural mechanisms. The first and most dangerous feature is total pain suppression. Normally, pain is your body's way of saying, stop before you destroy yourself. It's an evolutionary alarm system designed to keep you alive by forcing you to change behavior, break a bone, tear a ligament, suffer internal bleeding. The pain makes you stop. Without it, the damage escalates until your body literally can't function. The Berserker armor takes that alarm system and cuts the wires. If Guts fractures his arm, the armor's internal spikes drive directly into the injury locking the bones into place so the limb can keep functioning. Torn muscle, crushed ribs, the armor braces them in real time. It's like a medieval exoskeleton that doesn't heal, it forces. The armor isn't concerned with recovery. Its only goal is to keep the user fighting until the battle is over or until there's nothing left to fight with. In the real world, people with congenital insensitivity to pain, a rare neurological condition, often live shortened lives because they simply don't stop when they're injured. They burn themselves, break bones without realizing it, and wear down joints at a terrifying speed. Guts is essentially given that same condition, but in the middle of life or death combat against opponents that could tear a normal human in half. But the armor's most terrifying aspect isn't physical, it's psychological. The Berserker armor taps into Guts's ode, a supernatural life force tied to the most destructive emotions. Rage, grief, hatred, despair. The stronger these feelings, the more the armor amplifies his physical output. The result is a combat trance, so deep that Guts' conscious mind takes a back seat. His reflexes sharpen, his attacks become faster and more brutal, and his tolerance for injury skyrockets. But along with that comes tunnel vision the inability to distinguish between friend and foe. In this state, he's not a swordsman. He's a weapon with no off switch. There are parallels in real combat psychology. Soldiers in extreme prolonged firefights sometimes enter disassociative states, moments where their perception of time changes, pain dulls, and their actions become automatic. But even in those cases, the body is still bound by human limitations. The Berserker armor pushes far past that line, creating a feedback loop of damage, adrenaline, and aggression that would kill an ordinary person in minutes. And that's the ultimate danger of the armor. 
It doesn't make you invincible. It just makes you impossible to stop until the battle ends and all the injuries you've been ignoring hit you at once. In Guts' case, that often means collapsing in a heap of broken bones, torn muscles, and blood loss. Injuries that should have ended the fight hours earlier, but didn't. With the Berserker armor, Guts isn't just a warrior. He's a force of nature, unstoppable, unrelenting, and terrifying even to his allies. It's not a suit of armor. It's a pact with destruction. So, what does science say about Guts? It says no, absolutely not. There is no way any known human could replicate what he does. No one could lift, swing, and precisely control a 400-pound weapon for hours. No one could take repeated hits from an 8-foot apostle and remain standing. No one could fight a 100 armed men without collapsing from exhaustion or injury long before the battle ended. And yet, that's the point. Guts isn't meant to be realistic. He's meant to be the embodiment of persistence, of refusing to break when the entire world is trying to crush you. He's not about what the human body can do. He's about what the human spirit can endure. The science says it's impossible. The story says keep going. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next time we put another pop culture legend under the microscope. And tell me in the comments, which impossible character should we analyze next? Until next time, remember, pain fades, but the will to keep moving, that's what builds legends.